Hello everyone, welcome to Learn Reality Consult, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to give a brief presentation on the topic um, Introduction to GIS Mapping. And the outline of the presentation entails what is GIS? Defining GIS from different perspectives. Brief history of GIS, tracing the history of GIS, how it started, and who started it. And we have the summary of the presentation. So let's get started. What is then GIS? According to ESRI website, GIS is an integrated uh, collection of computer software, data used to view and manage information about geographic places, analyze spatial relationships, and model spatial processes. A GIS provides framework for gathering and organizing spatial data and related information so that it can be displayed and analyzed. So, um, this last part of the definition of GIS summarizes everything about what GIS provides framework for gathering and organizing spatial data and related information so that it can be displayed and analyzed. So, what is GIS? Another definition of GIS by Barrow 1986. In his book, The Principles of Geographic Information System for Land Resource Assessment, P.A. Barrow defines um, GIS as a set of tools for collecting, storing, retrieving at will, and transforming. Um, displaying spatial data from the real world for a particular set of purposes. But this um, definition is more uh, broad just compared to what uh, as the definition of GIS is. So let's uh, search for a more uh, practical definition of what a GIS is. So more practical definition of GIS um, is a software you say software and data that enable us to ask and answer questions involving where something is and how that location relates to other things. So this basically deals with where something is location and the relationship of the location to other things. So that is more a practical definition of what the GIS entails. So uh, let's continue with our presentation. An example of a, a GIS is the Yelp, um, Google Maps, we have Google Earth, and navigation uh, maps on a tablet. These are basically example of what uh, examples of GIS. So more practical definition of GIS. So that is one is uh, defining GIS based on what it can do. The actual work that GIS can do. This definition is based on that. And that is, it is a computer system for um, capturing, um, storing, um, filtering, and analyzing and visualizing your spatial data. And as I said, this definition is based on what, on what it can do. So, defining GIS. Defining GIS based on its components. So, apart from well, defining GIS based on what it can do, you can also define GIS based on its components. And the one of the components of GIS is a, com a computer hardware. Um, software, geospatial data, uh, procedures, and people. 
So that's another definition of GIS. And this um, definition based on component is very relevant because they've given um, a slot for uh, people and people are very instrumental in the use, in the development use of GIS. So as I said, this is based on what is components. So defining GIS, um, a desktop GIS, which is uh, made of the hardware, uh, software, and data, we have procedures. And this is basically what I refer to as what traditional definition of GIS, which is referred to as a desktop GIS. So we will have the hardware that you have to buy. You need to buy a software that which is expensive. You have to get data to be used. You then have to develop your own procedures in order to know how to use this stuff correctly. And all together, we will refer to this as a desktop GI. So this worked really well for many years, but it does have its own problems or limitations. If you have a lot of data and you want to do a lot of complex analysis, then the faster your computer, the faster you can get your work done. Big surprise, fast computers are relatively expensive and software is expensive so this is just basically what desktop GIS is all about and its limitation so is there any uh, good news anywhere what if there was a better way to do this what if you didn't always need the big expensive powerful GIS desktop what if you just use someone else's computer instead? We could run the software on their computer, store all the data and procedures there if you wanted to. Instead of just having one computer, what if we could use thousands of computers and treat them as if they were one big fast computer? We have a hardware software data and procedures about it. Thousands, and this is what we do when we use what we call the cloud, the cloud, which is made of the hardware and software. Um, uh, aspect of GIS that is a cloud. Um, is maintained by someone else and then you just need to rent a space and processing from whomever owns it when you need it and because there are thousands of computers acting together they are much more reliable they are centralized so they use less electricity which is better for environment as well as being cheaper to operate so this is what we will refer to as that so now that we have moved everything into the cloud all you need is a way to access the software data and proceed it remotely from where you are. And then we can do that using um, a web GIS, a platform for accessing the information uh, from the cloud. So, so let's continue our presentation. Procedures. We can talk about the procedure that are related to the definition of GIS. And probably a good way to think about this is a flowchart. If you are thinking about procedure for analyzing data, the idea is that you are trying to take data and create information. For example, if I'm looking for a house to buy in a city that I live in, and I'm trying to use different criteria to decide where should I look for a house to buy, we might look at things like school locations. School locations. You could create um, a buffer of distances around the location of the school. And then you determine how far your children can travel to school. 
Now we have data set. We are going to perform one operation on it using one type of tool. In this case, um, a buffer. In this case, a buffer. This is a tool. This is an uh, input. And this is what? Output. And then going to provide us with one output. That is the output. So assuming that you also want to know uh, property values within the neighborhood and whether you can afford those kind of properties. Uh, then you need to look at the property values within the locality. Uh, that is the, the input. And we need to reclassify which is the tool. And then the output with the affordability, whether we are able to afford um the purchasing or renting of the uh, property in the uh, neighborhood so if you also want to live in the neighborhood you may be interested in looking at current services you're also interested in looking at the residential zones and then you perform an operation which is reclassifying and then you have your preferred areas that you are interested in, and then you select it so these are the criteria that are set up in choosing the area that one is interested. So people, so you may notice that there's one thing that is missing from our earlier definition of GIS from this whole thing here. And that is people. So the definition of GIS don't include people. It is important to include it since people are key ingredient. People like you, believe it or not, that you have to have someone who understands how to use all this stuff in order to get something valuable and productive and useful out of it. So you can have the best hardware, best software, best data, best procedure, but if you don't have someone that can actually put all together, and work with it and create something of value then the whole rest of it is pretty much useless so my goal is to able to enable people to do these things for themselves so now let's give a brief history of uh, GIS records reveal that the very first GIS was invented in Canada the GIS history views Roger Thompson as the pioneer of concept, where the first iteration was designed to store, collate, and analyze data about land usage in Canada. So, in the late 1950s and early 1960s, the Canadian government began to realize that they wanted to be able to manage the use of land and resources better for economic and political reasons. In 1962, the government decided to map the entire country and started the Canada Land Inventory. And that is the Canada Land Inventory. The plan was to create about 1,500 miles to cover the entire country. And Roger Thompson was involved in creating this Canada Land Inventory. So the team that he, he was on started by talking about this project as a computer map. But then they realized it won't be much more than that. And they came up with the term Canada Geographic information system or CGIS. The system continued to be developed for many years. Roger Thomas is regarded as the father of GIS. So in summary, in summary, GIS entails a lot of things. It can't be really anything you want relating to spatial information special questions and software that help us to understand that and it can be composed of a lot of things too it doesn't always really have to have all this best software data network workflows procedures people those are all major components what makes gis and then geography is pretty old gis itself is a pretty new team and especially desktop gis and then the other takeaway will be that the GIS is increasingly common. We have seen the spatial revolution with mobile phone. 
and use and as current location device in our case and that is only going to go as time goes on continue to listen to these educative uh, videos and also subscribe to my channels bye bye